Hello everyone, my name is Christo, and with Monster Hunter 6 likely releasing in 2024, the one thing that I'm the most confident that we will get are new weapon types. So today, I want to break down a few ideas that I personally had. I'm not going to say that we're absolutely going to get weapons anything close to what I, what I have today, but I'm proud of what I came up with and would love to hear what you guys think about it. So, and I hate to say this, if you enjoy, be sure to like and subscribe, it'll mean a bunch, and whenever Monster Hunter 6 does get announced, you can come back here and tell me how wrong I am, and I'll be making a ton of videos about it. Without further ado, let's get started. The Risen Hunting Horn. How different the previous version of the Hunting Horn and the current version in Monster Hunter Rise are from one another, obviously horn mains will have the preference on which style they like more. With the older horn, you have a much larger song list that allows you to provide much more support and, and even support in more niche situations. And while your combos won't have much variation if you want to keep buffs constantly active, those buffs are more impactful and you're not sacrificing any damage. Rise Horn, on the other hand, is much more freeform, being able to easily provide buffs just by fighting as you normally would, and being a very strong elemental attacker with your shockwaves, making it a super fun weapon to play with. My solution is to separate the two into different weapons, leaving the classic horn as it was in Iceborne, and modifying the Rise Horn to be a high elemental support weapon, and replacing the Infernal Song with the shockwave attack to give you even more damage. Even if some attack animations are repeated between the two, they'll feel so different that it won't even matter. Ultimately, I'd be fine if we only just kept one or the other, but I think that this is the perfect middle ground so that way everyone can be happy. The Hand Bowgun The Hand Bowgun is a unique type of ranged weapon, adapting traits from the light and heavy bowguns into something entirely new. The biggest difference is that the Hand Bowgun does not use the standard raw damage ammo types as the other two bowguns. Instead, each one will become pre-stocked with an ammo type that is adapted from the three standard ammos which I'll go over with you right now. Charge ammo is functionally similar to the Charge Shot Hunter art from Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. As you hold the right trigger, your shot charges, allowing for increased damage. No charge is the same power as a normal level 1 shot, some charge is slightly stronger than a normal level 2 shot, and a full charge is significantly stronger than level 3. Next is Hollow Ammo, the adaption of the Pierce Ammo. Rather than a shot that deals more damage as it passes through a monster, instead, Hollow Ammo will hit a monster part and it will break apart dealing damage to that part that it hit. The initial hit deals a little over what a Pierce Level 2 hit would be, and the other hits would be about the power of a Pierce Level 1 shot. And additionally, this ammo type would have increased part break damage. This makes it a great option for monsters that have increase hit zones after the part has been broken. Finally is Scatter Ammo, the adaption of Spread Ammo. Scatter is an interesting shot type. It will start as a single shot and then after it travels some distance, it will break apart into a more standard spread shot, almost like the blaster weapons in the Splatoon series. The direct shot of the Scatter Ammo does a little less damage than the max possible damage of the spread part of the attack, but the direct hit also deals exhaust damage, so with some well-aimed shots you can reasonably get a KO or two throughout the hunt. My whole idea for the handbow gun is that it is a utility weapon, which is why it has increased part damage and exhaust damage. This is pushed even further by the fact that it is a one-handed weapon, so when you are aiming you can actually use items like the sword and shield. And for the element bands, the handbow gun can still use the standard elemental and status ammo that the other guns have but it will typically have a smaller magazine. The Clutch Gauntlets. With this weapon, I wanted to take some polarizing mechanics from the 5th generation, the Clutch Claw and the Wire Bugs, and turn them into something I've always wanted. A fast, lightweight, and strong element impact weapon. Let's start with the basics. Your Light Attack is a fairly standard combo that can be infinitely extended by inputting a direction when you attack. Resetting the combo similar to Sword and Shield in World. Your strong attack button is a parry. The hunter will enter a defensive stance, and if timed properly, 
will be a pretty strong counterattack that will re refill a clutch charge, but I'll be back to that in a moment, so let's put a pin in it for now. Pressing both attack buttons together will be a leaping punch. While it consumes stamina, it will seamlessly lead into the light combo, and it also follows up after the strong attack parry. So this is where the weapon becomes interesting, with the clutch charges. You have two charges, three if you use the load up skill, and the various attacks you can use with the right trigger will require at least one charge. By holding the right trigger, you enter an aiming mode, where the light and strong attack buttons each do different things. The strong attack button will fire the clutch claw in the direction you aim. If you connect with a monster, the hunter will grapple onto that part of the monster and instantly attack. Doing this attack will temporarily increase that part's hit zone value by 5, allowing for those parts to take more damage and sometimes even count for weakness exploit in some instances. If you aim at the ground, then depending on the direction you hold, you will do one of a few things. If you don't input any direction or if you hold forward, then you will do a flip that is functionally similar to the Dual Blades Adept Dodge or the Shrouded Vault Silkbind Attack, where you attack while avoiding and are put in a position to immediately begin your light combo or you can immediately get into the strong parry frame one so you can counter any follow-up attacks by holding left or right after firing at the ground you will do a move similar to the fanning maneuver silkbind skill from monster hunter rise and you can pull yourself closer and do a strong punch at any point during the rotation by pressing any attack button finally you can hold back after firing your claw to spend a second clutch charge to do a powerful slingshot attack you're left very vulnerable both before and after the attack, so be careful, but it works perfectly as a wake-up attack or a KO punish. Finally, by pressing the light attack button while aiming, you can do a powerful slinger burst attack by spending one clutch charge. Every clutch gauntlet's weapon will come with a different type of burst that may be an artillery explosion, a burst of elemental or status damage, or a blast of slicing damage like with piercing pods. Doing it like this will cause the hunter to do a leap back as it's fired to reposition, or if you hit the right trigger during your light combo, you will do a powerful hook followed up by a slinger burst as a combo ender. This still does consume one clutch charge. All in all, all these weapons I feel like could be very powerful if a little technical for the clutch gauntlet that would do amazing things in the hands of those who put in the work for it. Though, I did have one other idea that I just couldn't figure out the best way to make it work. It was going to be a spear or perhaps a halberd weapon that was going to primarily focus on counterattacks and guard points. If you landed successful counters, it would increase a level that would increase damage like the longsword spirit gauge. But, as I said, I just couldn't figure out a good moveset in my head and I didn't want to dedicate too much time to it, and rather wanted to leave this as more of a footnote in this video. Anyway, that'll do it. These are my weapon concepts, and I would love to hear what you guys think about them in the comments below. Like I said at the beginning, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed, because I will be making a lot of Moss Hunter 6 discussion videos like this in the future. But, that's all the time I have for now. Thank you all so much for watching, and have yourselves a damn good one. Later.